I'm about to share with you a dream every single Muslim should know of. A dream, ru'ya, which Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam had. This ru'ya, this dream is found in Sahih al-Bukhari. What's the story? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam from his habit after salah, he asks the people, هل أحد منكم رأى رؤيا any one of you saw a dream last night so I can explain so I can describe the meaning of your dream and Rasulullah sallam one day he told the Sahaba about his own dream and that's what we want to really focus on and learn very well he said last night أتاني رجلان two people came to me in my dream and they woke me up in the dream so I got up so they told me in طلق proceed proceed and in this dream, there are seven scenes I want to share with you, inshaAllah. And we'll explain what each one is. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, فَانْطَلَقْنَا Then I went with these two people. Who are they? You will know, inshaAllah. We went and went and we saw a man lying on the ground. And the man who was lying on the ground, his head was right here. And behind his head was a man holding a rock, hajara. So this man holding the rock looks at the man lying down and he throws the rock and it smashes and crushes the guy's head, destroys the head. Rasulullah says, فَيَتَدَحْرَجْ That rock rolls and rolls. So the thrower of the rock runs after the rock to pick it up. By the time he picks up the rock, he returns back to the man lying on the ground, his head comes back to normal, as if nothing happened. And he does it again, he smashes the head. The pain is fresh, continuous. So Rasulullah says in the dream, Subhanallah, ma hadhani, what's these two people doing? What's going on? So the two people next to the Prophet they say, in talaq, in talaq, proceed, proceed. Scene number two, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes a very similar position. A man lying on his back and a man standing on above his head. Does he have a rock? No, he has a hook. A hook made out of iron, hadid, steel. And what does he do? Three things. Yati bi'ayni, he goes to the guy's head. Half of the side first, half of the head. He gets the hook and he pokes his eye and he goes all the way back ila qafah, which is the back of the head, tears his face apart. Then he goes into the same side, but the nose. Now we go from the eyes to the nose and he rips his nose all the way to the back. Then he goes to the third part, which is the mouth and he tears it all the way to the back. Rasulullah is explaining it as detailed as I'm making it be me Allah, except from all of us. The Prophet Sallallahu says, and by the time this man goes to the other side of the face, that first side goes back to normal. And he does it with the eyes, pokes it all the way to the qafah, meaning the back of the head, and he goes into the nostrils, the nose, he rips it all the way to the back, and the mouth rips it all the way to the back. Some of you are distressed, maybe. Some of you have never heard this hadith before, maybe. Rasulullah says, Subhanallah, ma hadhan. He is also terrified. He says to the people next to him in the dream, What's going on? Who are these two people? They said, In talaq, in talaq, proceed, proceed. To scene number three. What's scene number three? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, and we saw a tanur. A tanur is like an oven. An oven that is a cone shaped. Laysa lahu makhraj. And Rasulullah sallam says, ثُمَّ So we looked inside the oven and we saw men and women without any clothes. Nothing, naked, ura. The Prophet says, then the fire, shu'la minna, the fire is turned on. When the fire is turned on, the naked men and women, they try to leave the oven and they cannot because the oven is closed. So Rasulullah asked the people next to him, man ha'ula, who are these people? They said, in talaq, in talaq. Proceed, proceed to scene number four. Rasulullah says in scene number four, he saw a man swimming, swimming in a river red like blood. Nahar, ahmar kaddam. And as that man is swimming, there's another man standing on the shore or the bank of the river holding hijara, rocks. And when the man swimming, he comes to the edge of the river, he opens his mouth. And the one standing throws the rock inside the mouth. And the guy goes back to swimming. Then he comes back to the bank, he opens his mouth. Then that man standing throws another rock and he goes back to swimming and swimming. So the Prophet says to the two people, Man ha'ula, what's going on? They said, in talaq, in talaq, proceed, proceed. Then we go to scene number five out of seven. That scene is interesting. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and I saw one man with such repulsive appearance, 
His look is something I've never seen before. Scary, freaky, repulsive. You see, like, you don't want unbelievable. I've never seen anything like that before. So Rasulullah says, this man was kindling fire. And he used to turn that fire on and he used to go around that fire. Very scary scene. So the Prophet asked the two people, Man hadha? Who's this man? They said, Intalik, intalik, proceed, proceed. So they went to the sixth scene. What's going on here? Rasulullah now he saw Hadiqa, a beautiful garden with so much dense vegetation. Hey, alhamdulillah, now a positive, kullu positive, all khair insha'Allah. But the sixth scene is different than the previous five. Beautiful garden. He says, وَرَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا طويل. I saw a man who's so, so tall. I can barely see his head for how tall he was. وَحَوْلَهُ And around that tall man are so many children. I have never seen so many kids in these amounts in my life before. So I asked what's going on and so on. But they never tell him what's really happening. And then we go to the seventh scene. And the last one before we explain all seven insha'Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَانْطَلَقْنَا So we proceeded until we saw a garden that I've never seen anything like before. Not even the one before was like this one. This was special. And in it is, around it is a gate. And so we went to that gate and we opened that gate. So then the two guys told me, Itla, go up, rise. And we rose all the way up until we found a Medina, a whole city made out of bricks of gold and silver. Medina Kamila, Hajar, Bina'uha min al Dhahabi wal Fiddah. And in it, I saw men I've never seen before. How? They looked two opposite images in the same body. One half, Ajmal ma yakun. So handsome. I've never seen men more handsome than them, that half. But then their other half, Absha ma yakun. It was so unattractive, so ugly, if you wish to say. The other half, strange. So then one of the two people that were with me told all these men, jump into that river, jump into that nahar. When nahar kana abyad kal halib aw kal laban, that river was so white. And they jumped into it. Rasulullah says, then when they left the river, they became all beautiful. Then one of the two people next to the Prophet ﷺ, they said, look. So the Prophet looked and it was a beautiful palace in the shape of like a cloud. So they said to Muhammad baytuk. this is your palace. So he said, Barakallahu fikum. Muhammad said, may Allah bless you. Now get me inside it. They said, La ba'd, not yet. The time will come where you will enter that place. So Rasulullah says, you made me see so many strange things today. Please explain. They said, now we will explain. The two people next to the Prophet wasallam in the dream were angels. They were malaika. As for the one who was lying on the ground and was being struck by a rock that crushed his head, فَهَذَا الرَّجُلْ This man used to read the Qur'an but he abandoned it. Can kitab Allah wa yaqra al Quran, doing great job, but he completely ignored the Quran. It's no longer part of his life. Wala ya'malu bih, and no longer applies its ruling. Wa kana yanamu an salati al maktuba. And this person used to intentionally doesn't care in missing salah. Ya khi, get, get up, put your alarm. No, I got exams. I got this. You intentionally miss salah. The Prophet says this man's punishment because he intentionally yanam used to sleep in and miss salah. May Allah not make us of that group. Ya Rasulullah, who's the other group? Group number two out of seven, Rasulullah says that the angels explained to him the man who was lying on the ground and there was a hook ripping their eyes, their nose, and their mouth were people. In the morning when they wake up, they would go out and start lying. Lying right and left. Kadib, lying whether about jobs, about their lives, about their feelings, about what they did, about what they will do. Kadib. Lie upon lie upon lie. Hatta tablugh al kadib al afaq until they lie that one lie that goes viral. A lie that spreads like wildfire. That's the punishment of the liars. May Allah protect us. The eye, the nose, and the mouth. What about the scene, the third one? Ya Rasulullah, about the people in the oven. The two angels says, as for the naked men and women that you saw in the oven, they are az-zunatu wa-zawani. May Allah protect us. They are the ones who commit that major sin of fornication and adultery. May Allah protect us, Ya Allah. 
May Allah protect the elders and the youngsters, the men and the women, Ya Rabbil Alameen. That's the punishment. And subhanAllah, the punishments as you see them are similar to the sins that they committed. The clothes were off, the clothes are off. You went for that moment of 5-10 minutes and that fire gets turned on for 5-10 minutes. Allah knows best to burn them. May Allah protect us and forgive us all. Amir Rabbil Alameen. Scene number four, the man who was swimming in the river that is red like blood and rocks were being thrown in their throats and into their stomachs. It's the one who deals with interest and so on and eats from it. May Allah make our income halal. May Allah make our spending in the halal and our income in halal both ways. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Number five, that man that you saw in which their physical features was extremely scary. The one who is igniting the fire and goes around it is Malik. Who's Malik? Khazinu Jahannam. He's the gatekeeper of Jahannam. Allahumma ajirna min adab al Then Rasulullah Sallallahu the last two scenes. As for the very tall man that we could not see his head for how tall he was and all the kids around him. Hada Ibrahim alayhi salam. And all these children are the children who died when they were young. Dharari al-Muslimin. So all oh, you who lost a child before the age of puberty, Absha, good news. They are with the greatest of human beings, Ibrahim alayhi salam. And insha'Allah, yawm al-Qiyamah, O oh, you who lost your son or daughter when they were young, bi-idhnillah, in another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us that they will be reunited with their believing mom and dad, insha'Allah. May Allah grant you patience and grant you the reward of that calamity you went through, Amin Rabbil Alameen. All these kids, Dharari al-Muslimin. One of the Sahaba asked Rasulullah in this hadith, said, Ya Rasulullah, wa awlad al mushrikeen But what if they were the children of the mushrikeen? He says, wa awlad al mushrikeen And even the children from the mushrikeen parents who died before the age of puberty. And they might find a difference of opinion, but we respect both, inshaAllah. What about the seventh and last scene? The men who were half gorgeous and half very unattractive. Rasulullah Sallallahu he says, these are the men. They are the people who do the deed and they mix the deed with good stuff and then they do the bad stuff. So they had that mix. So when we go to that river, inshaAllah, we are wiped from that evil. And may Allah make us all of the people of Jannah.